Hi boys and girls and welcome to third through fifth grade Bible activities. I'm Lisa and I work with the kids at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Faribault. I'm glad that you joined me today. We are going to start talking about the Gospels. And um, the reason that I want to do this, boys and girls, is because the four Gospels, they are, you know them, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all tell the story of Jesus' life. So why do we need four stories about Jesus' life? Well, each of the Gospels was written by a different person. So they each tell the same story, but they each tell it a little differently. So let me explain something. If four of you went to a baseball game together, and one of you was sitting near third base, and one of you was sitting by left field, way out in left field. One of you was sitting along the first baseline, and one of you was sitting behind home plate. You all saw the same baseball game, but do you think that you would tell the story of the baseball game the exact same if you were the one sitting at third base would your story be the exact same as the person sitting out in left field? Also, if you were really interested in pitching and the pitcher was a really good pitcher and you were sitting behind home plate, you would tell the story from the vantage point of the pitcher and the pitching in the game. Whereas if you were somebody who was sitting at first base, and you were interested in watching the base running that the players were doing, you would tell the story differently than that person who was watching from behind home plate. So this is the thing about the Gospels. They are the same story about Jesus' life, but told in some different ways because of the way that things were seen and what these people were interested in. First of all, boys and girls, I want to teach you a huge word synoptic. Does anybody have any idea what synoptic means? You can impress your parents and your grandparents and people that you know by saying that you know what the meaning of synoptic is. It is, it means to see things the same way. Optic, we have optic nerves in our eyes. We go to an optician or an optometrist to get our eyes checked. They're a doctor of, of eyes. Um, and the word sin means the same. So we see things the same way. This is how Matthew, Mark, and Luke saw what was happening and reported what was happening in the same type of way. John, on the other hand, is a little bit different, and we're going to learn why. So, boys and girls, if you were to take a field trip to St. Paul, and you wanted to see something magnificent and beautiful, I would send you to the St. Paul Cathedral. It's a ginormous church near the capital of uh, the Capitol building of Minnesota, and it is um, built a long time ago, starting in the early 1900s, and it is, it's got a huge dome, and it's just giant, and in that sanctuary, you can kind of stand in the center and look towards the four corners of that room, and you would see some different statues that represent the gospel writers of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But the statues aren't of men. Matthew is represented by an angel. Now, why is he represented by an angel? Matthew wrote the story of Jesus for people who already knew about the faith. It was written for people who already understood how God works. And Matthew is considered an angelic book with a message from heaven for the earth. 
So Matthew is represented by an angel. Now, the statue that represents Mark, the second gospel, is a lion. Now, boys and girls, imagine that you are being chased by a lion. You would have to move in a big hurry to get away from that lion. And you would want to go immediately and get away from that lion. That is how Mark writes the story of Jesus' life. He uses the word immediately many, many, many times during the writing of his gospel. The writing is strong, it's powerful, moving quickly, kind of things that would describe a lion. And if you think of a lion roaring, you would think that's how Mark told this gospel. It was an urgent story that he needed to tell, and he told it in a hurry, like a lion. Okay, the statue that represents Luke is an ox. An ox is an animal. It's huge, but it's steady, and it moves at its pace, and it doesn't go any faster or any slower. It has a job to do, and it keeps on moving steadily until its job is done. Luke, the writer of the Gospel of Luke, was a very learned man, and he wrote in a very orderly fashion. The stories that we are going to be studying about Jesus' life this spring come from the Gospel of Luke, because we are going to be able to learn how things happened in an order, and also in the way that he wrote it, he makes sure that justice is the most important thing, that doing the right thing is so important, and that's what comes through in the gospel that he wrote. So boys and girls, Luke is represented by an ox. Now, what is John represented by? Well, he is represented by an eagle. Think of an eagle soaring, flying through the sky. How does he see this story? He has a bird's eye view. He sees the whole story. He takes a look at it and it's all one big picture. He tells the story, but he doesn't use a lot of details. And he gives you that big picture so that hopefully you can see things in a new way and try to decide what God might be revealing to you. So John is represented by an eagle, and that's why his version of the story about Jesus is quite different than Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So Matthew, Mark, and Luke are synoptic gospels, and John is the one that's just a little bit different. As we study our stories this spring now, through the eyes of the Gospel of Luke, that is how we are going to learn the stories about Jesus. But at the same time, we might take a look at how those stories are represented in the other Gospels. And it could be a fun way for you to kind of learn something about your Bible about how it was written and how it's written for you. Different ways of telling Jesus' life story, but so that you will understand. Thank you for joining me for Bible activities today, boys and girls. We'll see you next time. Bye.